Huh? People have told you that you have a drop foot. Okay. You ever see anybody move a refrigerator? Yeah. They don't get down on the ground and pick it up. Right. What do they do? They lean it over and they rotate it and then they put it down and they lean it over here and they rotate it and put it down. So if this was your foot, this right corner was your foot and you lean your head over here, what, is it, what happens to that foot? Even if you can't bend your knee or your hip, this has no knee, no hip, but I've got it off the ground. Right. So how can you drag your foot if you move your head? Make sense? Then you put it down. How do I move that foot? By moving my head over, I get my foot off the ground. Does that make sense? Okay. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that you'll notice when we watched you walk, you've seen these old people. We see them on TV and they make fun of them because they're, yeah. you know why they walk like that? Because they can't lean over here long enough to take a step. Okay. And then they can't lean over there long enough to take that foot off the ground. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that's why moving your head has everything in the world to do with whether you drag your foot or not. Now let's talk about one other issue. You have a knee that locks out. Yep. Every MS patient that you ever saw is they go down the pike, have knees that lock out. Mm -hmm. But let me ask you a question. If I stand with both feet like this, mm -hmm. and I turn my shoulders like this, what do my knees do? This one locks, and what's that one bends? Mm -hmm. And if I go the other way, what happens? That one locks, that one bends. So if we have a knee that's locking, does it make sense that if we turn our shoulder into the knee, the knee will bend. Mm -hmm. So what knee is it that locks? This one. Okay, so put your foot forward. Okay. Now, what I want you to do is turn that shoulder towards me. Okay. And let the, and and let, bend it. And, and let the knee, now come over and put some weight over here. Of course, you can't put your weight over here very well, but now keep the shoulder forward and now step through and watch the knee stay stable. See, that knee didn't, didn't lock back, did it? No, it did not. So, you think that's the answer? Okay, so what do you guys have to do? So, so now you want to lean over here to take that foot off the ground so you don't have to, you're hip hiking, right? Yes. And if you don't, so you don't want to hip hike anymore, this. right, you're circumducting and hip hiking. But physics says, if you lean your head over here, the foot, my foot's off the ground right now. I didn't have to pick up anything. And then I swing it forward and I, now when it hits, I let the knee bend. Right. And what am I doing with this shoulder? This shoulder's coming forward, forward. And that hip shoulder forward, controls your knee. See that? There's your knee bending. Yeah. Now you're still, you're, you're doing a lot I'm of this. Doing it. So, you, so you've been taught such poor motor patterns or you've developed them, I'm not blaming anybody, but we need to stop that. You're doing so much work right. to walk right. because walking is really pretty stupid. I lean over here, I throw my big old foot out there and I let my knee bend and then I get down, sit down on that leg. And I, where's my weight now? Where's my nose? Over that toe? Mm -hmm. And I got time to take that foot off the ground all day? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'd like to put this into your head, because just like learning tennis and you don't, you keep not hitting the ball very well, it's right. practice, right? Practicing form. Practice. So this type of form, this type of information, as you practice it becomes easier. Just like typing, the more you do, the easier it gets, right? Okay. Motor learning. Okay. So all that makes sense to you? Makes sense. It does. Okay, so walking is nothing more, and to do complex things in walking, if you watch me, later on, it's a little early for you, but later on, walking is nothing more than taking my weight from here to here, like just shifting. And even if I do something like this, the rules don't change. I'm just switching, even with a turn, which would throw you on the ground right now. Right. Oh, no. But as you get your spinning going, it won't, because okay. you get used to that. Okay. And then learning, go back to learn the biomechanics, of simply letting your weight shift. But just like in the old days when you used to slow dance with your boyfriend. Right. My head does what? Person waiting on the cab does yeah, this, right? Uh -huh. Lazy, right. easy way to walk. We do that all day. So your head is going with? You just allow your whole body to go over here. See me over here? Hi. And then I can go over here. Hello. And you have a really hard time doing that because here's the hard part. If you were completely normal and I walked up to you and I said, let me see you lean to the left, and you did. And I said, that's not enough. Let's see you lean some more. You're gonna go, oh no, I'm gonna fall. I'm not gonna do that. You have that very real sense of falling way ahead of time. It's, it's a lie. That's why the plumb line, 
learning first to just learn how to do this without even trying to walk just learning to shift your weight from one side to the other in front of a mirror and know that your nose and is lined up over your big toe and then shifting over here and letting your nose know you're lined up over that big toe we add that to the hyperbaric oxygen you're doing it all comes together okay yeah all right okay. any questions I'm sure I'll have to take a million of them. Yeah, and so when you're coming in here, we'll do some, we'll work with you in rehab to reinforce these patterns. Okay. And then we'll be doing really wild stuff like this. That's wild. And you, right now you'd say, ah, oh, no. No. But you will be able to do that. Okay. Yep. Sounds good. Okay, thanks. All right, thank you. So you're going to.